G'day everybody, Nick Dinger here again for another VB.net tutorial. This time around we're doing the part two of the item templates rounding off last week's video. So just to recap, last time we set up ourselves an item template which allowed us to customize all the items that go inside of our list box. And what we did is we set up, whoopsie doodle, a checkbox, an image, and a label for every single one of our list items. We then created an item class which contained all the data that's required for our item template, the checked, the image, and the text value. And then finally, we set up a couple of buttons to play around with it. Now, there's a couple of things I want to do in this video. The first one is how do we get items into the list box before the program even begins for the user? Okay, we can do this. We have to do it via code, but we can do it. Second thing is how do we change the data that's already in the list view? So let's say we want to change the text, or if we want to change a picture, or if we want to change just the fact that it's checked. Now, I'm not talking about letting the user change it, I'm talking about the programmer forcibly changing it. Let's say you want to invert all your checkboxes, then we're going to do that. So, to start with, we're going to add in. So, when this program starts, we've got three items listed in our list box and they're going to have some preset data, preset checkboxes, and a couple of different icons, just so we can. All right, the first thing we need to do is we need to go to main window, and we need to start adding some code. Now, right now, we're dealing directly with the items attached to our list box. What we're going to do is we're going to break that link of items, we're going to create our own list, and we're going to replace it. Okay, and then when we add things to our list, it's automatically going to update in the list box, okay? The first thing that we need to do, people, is I want you to come up the top, make a few spaces above class main window, and right here we need to put imports system.collections.objectModel, all right? And that's got what we need inside of it. The data type we need is called an observable collection. Now, observable collection is one that when you add things to it, remove it, edit it, that it automatically notifies different controls and different objects it's attached to. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to create our own collection just here. So dim items as a new observable collection. Just press space and it should put the bracket and of in for you. And it's going to be of our item class. Okay, so we've made a collection of the class that we made in the last video. All right, so when we add things to these items, it's automatically going to add them to the list box. When removing things from these items, it's automatically going to remove things from the list box. You can use a regular collection, but the problem is it does not automatically update. You'd have to manually do it. That's why we use an observable collection instead. Okay, now we need to get into our window loaded event and add a little bit of code there. The first bit of code is just going to be us adding items to our list box. The last line is going to tell the list box where its new items are coming from. Okay, so let's go to main window. I'm going to click up here next to width in my diamond. I'm going to go down the next line, come back a few, and our event is loaded. Press equals. Let's do a new event handler for that one. And this is where our code's going to go window loaded. So there it is. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm just going to add some items into my my um, items collection, okay? So let's just go items, no, items dot add. And then we're gonna go the exact same way we added them in the last video under the add button. We're gonna go new item class, and then we're gonna check an image and some text. So let's start with false, okay? New URI for the image, and it's gonna be just my clock image again. So pictures, icons, clock.png. Uh, and then the text, let's call it item number one. All right, so that's adding in my first item. I'm going to copy that, and I'm going to paste it twice. So I'm going to have three items to begin with. Bang, bang. Let's rename him here to two and three. Let's set this one to true for the sake of it. Um, let's change this I guy's icon to a bin. Okay, they're the only icons I've got, by the way, are clocks and bins, apparently. Now, that's all well and good. We've created our items, okay? They're in the list. What we have to do now is tell the list box that its items are now coming from our items. That sounds really weird. But our observable collection is now where it's going to get its items from. So you're going to go the name of our list box, which is lsttest.itemssource, just like so. And you go equals items. And that will replace where the original items come from. Now, we have broken a little bit of our code with the add button. We need to change it slightly. 
okay? But before I do, I wanna click Start. I just wanna see the behavior of our program now. Should just come up, it's got the three items, you can see that the icons are set and that checkbox is checked. And this still works, by the way, the is checked. It says true, and then it says false. That still works. The one that doesn't work is our add. And it's because we're no longer allowed to add things directly to our list box now that we've changed its source. It needs to go directly into items. That's it. That's the only change we need to make. It's going to bring them back a couple. All right. So with that done, okay, it's now time for us to attack the next section. But before we do, I like to test things just like so. Everything still works perfectly fine. So that's how you would add in items before the program begins. I mean, that could... You don't have to do it like that. It could come from a database, it could come from a text file, it could come from a spreadsheet, it could come from anything, okay? Or even the internet for if you really want to go that far. Now, the next stage is getting it so we can change the list items while the program's running. So let's just add in a button, which is going to test this code. I'm going to copy and paste this guy. I'm going to get rid of his event, and we're going to make a new event. And it's going to be button click two. And we're going to change... Whoop, not check, change, text. So when we click on an item in the list box, we click on this button, it's going to just simply change the text of the selected item. Now really, this should be the most straightforward piece of code, and it is, okay, to be honest. Let's come down to button click two, and we do it the same way that we read the checked box. We're gonna go list test dot selected item dot text equals, and let's just say, hello world. Like so. So if I press play now, okay, I should be able to do it on an existing one. So I'll click him, click change text. Nothing happens. I didn't get an error. You'll see my program still running. Now, just to make, I just want to emphasize something here. I'm going to message box the selected item's text straight after we change it. I know it says dumb, but just bear with me. Okay, so message, whoop, that was just silly. All right, so message box show the selected items text. Please do that if you want to follow me and then pause the video and give it a go. So let's click on item three. Let's click change text. Now there's something interesting for you. It says item number three, but you'll notice that all I did was message box the text of the selected item. So how the hell was it hello world? That's because it's updated the text in our item class, but the list box has not been notified that that property changed okay since it hasn't been notified it hasn't updated it visually okay so that's our next stage I'm gonna get rid of this message box because I don't want to test it anymore I just want it to bloody work we aren't gonna add any code in here unfortunately we have to change our item class okay so if you want to quickly swap to your item class we're about to make this thing look nice and ugly. This looks nice and pretty. I like how clean this is and simple it is. We're about to make it look incredibly ugly. Okay. First thing is we need an import up the top to fix this. And what we're implementing here is, let me just type this up. We're implementing the ability for our class to notify people that properties have changed. So just in the way that the observable class tells the list box, hey, I've got a new item. Hey, someone just removed an item. Hey, someone just edited one item. Okay, we are about to implement the same thing for our item class and it will just say, hey, my checked property got updated. Hey, my image got updated. Hey, my text just got updated. Okay, so what we have to do, you have to import this one just because it makes your code much shorter. Okay, and now what we need to do is we need to have our class implements what's called the I notified property changed. Okay, and you're going to get an error here, and that's fine. That's okay. So what this is, this is Microsoft's built-in class for allowing you to notify different things or different objects and controls that properties have changed. Okay, what I want you to do, just put your cursor on the end of this line. It's whinging that we don't have an event called property changed. So to fix that, press enter on the end of that line, and it will automatically generate an event down the bottom. Don't touch him. We need him. We actually have to implement one more thing before we can use this properly, okay? And then we have to change our code and destroy it and make it look all ugly, but anyway. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna create a protected sub here. Sub on property changed, okay? And the parameter is just gonna be name. So what this is, every time one of our properties, where doesn't matter which one it is, changes, we're gonna send this sub 
the name of the property that changed. And this guy's going to trigger off the event. And then all of it happens, you know, you get a bit of a waterfall effect and it's just going to notify all the objects what's going on, okay? The code in this sub is really easy. You just do raise event, property changed, okay? It automatically comes up because there's only one event in our class. The sender is me or the item class itself. And then the E, which is property changed event args, will be a new property changed event args with brackets at the end and name in those brackets. So we raise this event with me as the sender, so the actual class that sent the message, and then we create a new changed event argument with just the name of the property that changed. Okay, this is all slightly confusing probably, but let's show you, well let me show you, how this actually works, and unfortunately we have to destroy this neat looking little thing up here. We have to implement uh, members now. So we're going to create three hidden variables, and then these properties are going to control those variables. And you'll see why we have to do this in a sec. I'm going to start with checked. Right here, people, I want you to go private, because we don't want anyone to be able to access this by default. Underscore checked as a Boolean. Now, the reason I put the underscore, because that indicates to me already that it's a, it's a property. Oh, sorry, it's a variable inside my class, and underscore to me means that it's only accessible here in the class. It's a private one. That's just why I have an underscore. Okay, don't worry about the error. The way we fix this error is we now need to use this property sub, or this property, I should say, in the correct format. So to do that, you're going to type in get and press enter. And now we get the two sections. We get the get and we get the set. So the get is when they trying to read the checked property. What are we going to do? We're going to return checked. So just return the value of the checked. What are we going to do when they set the property checked? Well, that's when they tick it or they untick it. What if they're changing the value of it? Well, you're simply going to let checked equal the value that it's changed to. But this is the key factor. When something changes, we now need to notify that the property has changed. So that is the important thing. So what we do is you go on property changed, in quotes the name of the property. All right. So that is the key factor, and that's the whole reason we have to change our lovely little property into these things. Okay, so I'm actually going to stop the video. I'm going to do the other two properties the exact same way, nothing different, just different names and different data types, and I want you to do the same. So I'll be back in a second with the finished properties. Okay, welcome back. So these are the three properties done. I've got my members up here. I then got the three properties, and they all look exactly the same. It's just I've changed the return, the set value, and the on property changed name. So please make sure you've got all three of them set up properly and you're ready to continue. So by doing all of that, it's a very long-winded process, I know. But allowing us to do that, now we'll update our list box automatically without doing anything else. So let's just try this button again, this change text. So I haven't changed the code at all since we stopped the video. And there you go. So just implementing that notified property changed now forcibly tells it to update the text box. So what we're going to do now, just for the sake of it, we're going to implement a couple more buttons, okay, just because we can, all right? And these ones are going to change all the images of every single item there, and we're going to do another one that inverts all the checkboxes. So let's start with the image one, okay? And he's going to be a new event handler as well. Change all images, and we're going to have another one. So button click four is going to be for the invert selection. All right, so number three is the images, number four is the selection. So let's go to that now. Here we are, number three is going to be the images. So what we can do is we can actually create a loop which goes through every single item in our list box and changes the image. And you can do this yourself if you want to. Now I'm just going to go through the list box itself. I'm not going to go through my items. You could do that. It's the exact same thing. But let's do a for each loop. We're going to go for each item as an item class. That just means my variable is going to be called item and it's going to be the item class data type inside my list boxes items. So for every single item in my list box, I'm going to change the image. So item.image equals, and we have to do the long winded way, I'm sorry, new bitmap image, new URI. Again, I'm not going to explain this, different video, different time. 
let's change them all to whoop, pictures, icons. Let's change them all to the bin. Okay, so for every single item, change the image to my new image. Okay, pause the video if you need to, because I'm going to start this up. Click on change all images. Haha, <laughs> many bins. Okie dokie. Last one is just inverting the selection of the checkboxes. Okay, and that's pretty easy. We're going to do the for loop again, so I'm going to copy this. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to change the checked value this time around. And the way you invert a Boolean value is you just say checked equals not item.checked. Okay, so if it's true, then not true is false. If it's false, not false is true. Okay, hit the start button. Let's add in some more for the sake of it. Do a few more checks. And there you go. Blup, 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 blup. Righto, everybody, that's it for item templates. It's a bit of a, a rundown. It's probably not everything you can do, but hopefully it's a good introduction and a good run through of how to do everything that you probably need to in the future. Hope you enjoyed the video, everybody. Like, subscribe, comment down the bottom. I'd love to hear from you. But for the moment, this is Nick Dingle signing off. I'll see you in the next VB video. Thanks for watching.